Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. It is your host Weep Union and in this one we have several developments. The Ukrainians made some recaptures within Selidove while the Russians continue advances south of the settlement. In the north in the Kursk section of the front line the Russians advanced further in their counter offensive and have managed to fully recapture the Klushkovo districts. In the Jesivyar direction, there has been several developments. In matters of my mapping, I've changed the color of the regions that is not annexed by Russia. Therefore, it is clearer now exactly what Russia has the official objective of capturing compared to what is not a priority. Starting out in the Kursk section of the front line, the Russians have managed to completely push the Ukrainians out of the Klushkovo district. With this, there is no threat to the Russian flank here in the same river area, and therefore the full Russian attention can now be directed towards their counter offensive in the east. Naturally, the Ukrainians are likely going to attempt continuous probing attacks here in the border area to redirect Russian forces. However, their first attempt from the previous counter offensive of the Russian Sea in the Kursk region has now officially been pushed out. Now, in the eastern parts, we see that the Russians have advanced further within Nova Ivanovka, capturing the majority of the settlements. There is a part here by the forest area which re remains in the grey zone. And the Ukrainians still hold Leonidovo and Alexandria. However, the Russians do have control over the majority of Nova Ivanovka. This secures the eastern flank a bit more. However, the proximity of Ukrainian forces to the road is still close by, as the Russians are still occupied with the clearing of the areas near Olgovka, as the Ukrainians have withdrawn from the area, but that doesn't mean all of them made it out, and therefore the Russians are where their objective is to make sure that there are no Ukrainians remaining in the forest patch as well as in the settlement itself. In the pocket southwest of Selanyishra, the Russians are fighting over the remaining parts of Lyubimovka and the Tulsi Luk. However, it is reported that fighting still continues despite the physical encirclement of the area. The river line naturally cannot be passed through unless you drop all your equipment and swim across. And at that point, you'd be at the mercy of whatever Russian soldiers standing on the other side. Therefore, it is considered fully encircled with this advance south of Selyeshach, where the Russians now hold the forest line just ahead of the fortified positions of the Ukrainians. That means that the current Ukrainian resistance in the area is the final stand, similar to that of Volodar at the end of last month and the start of this one, where Ukrainian soldiers who did not make it out made their final stand. Some surrendered, others fought till the end. And this is a similar scenario where some Ukrainian soldiers who did not make it out are making their final stand in remaining areas of Tolshiluk and Lyubimovka. However, once that is done, the Russians will then focus onwards towards Leonidovo. They will also continue along towards Svetlikovo, where fighting has not reached yet as the Russians are waiting to clear up the areas. At the same time, there is this interesting perspective. If we take a look at the northern parts here of the Ukrainian Kursk incursion, there is this massive area where the Ukrainians have a lot of forces present. Now, the Russians have advanced recently in and along the railways here to the east. The Russians could launch an operation, capture Nadinov, and then towards Malaya Luknia, which is on the eastern bank of this river line right here that goes along the settlements. That means that the Russians have a river line as a front line to protect their flank on the western parts. If they capture Nadinov, then there's no significant Ukrainian presence on the eastern flank either, as they'd have to cross large fields to get to this location. Therefore, the Russians could launch an operation towards Malaya Luknia and combine that with an assault from Novo Ivanovka, which could look to encircle this entire area, cut off their supplies, and make use of that to close this entire pocket in the northwestern parts of the Ukrainian Kursk incursion. It would also free up a lot of Russian soldiers to then focus on an assault towards Sutsha, where they can use the roads along the northwestern parts and western parts of Sutsha. 
At the same time, with the fighting of Lepovo, which will likely end soon, as well as the Ukrainian supply is very limited, the Russians could do a river crossing here in the southern parts to physically encircle the remaining Ukrainian parts, which would be centered around Sucha and the northern parts and eastern parts of the incursion. This entire area here would be under threat of a physical encirclement between the Russian forces in the eastern and western flanks. The Ukrainians are, however, sending reinforcements. Therefore, the Ukrainian soldiers holding out by Lyubimovka, slowing down the Russian counteroffensive, may buy the Ukrainians enough time to introduce new forces which could halt the Russian second counteroffensive and reach another stalemate to prevent such an operation from taking effect, which could encircle the Ukrainian forces here along Sucha. Moving on to the Jesev Yar direction, the Russians have made several advances across the canal. In the northern parts near Hryorivka, the Russians have advanced and captured the southern parts of the first patch here southwest of Hryorivka. This has allowed them to reach the crossing here south of Hryorivka, limiting the supply of the Ukrainians in the area and potentially connecting the eastern and western bank of the canal in yet another crossing which could redirect Ukrainian forces from the defense of Chesavir to the northern flank, weakening their effects and capabilities within the city itself. The Russians have also managed to expand their crossing here near Kalinina along the forest patch where they are fighting through it to gain full control of it, which will allow cover to provide additional infantry and supplies to the infantry through that area. And finally, there was a third crossing here near Ivanivske, where the Russians have crossed over the main highway and have managed to capture several fortified positions of the Ukrainians in the area. With this, the Ukrainians are now in a very difficult position as Russians have managed to secure several crossings here near Chesivya, both near Kalinina in the micro district and in the southern flank near Ivanivske, both along the main highway and in the forest patches nearby. This has allowed for four separate crossings of the Russians and they are nearing a fifth one further north. What has allowed the Ukrainians to prevent any significant Russian advances along this section of the front line is naturally the advantages given with the high ground position of Chesivyar, the canal on the eastern flank which prevents any significant Russian breakthrough as it would have to cross over the canal, and then the limited crossings the Russians had available, which meant it was a small area where the Ukrainians could focus all of their artillery and drone strikes. Now that the Russians have significantly expanded the crossings across the canal, the Ukrainian drones have to look in several directions to make sure that no crossing in strong effect is taking place, and this limits the firepower the Ukrainians have available and their ability to quickly detect any such crossings. Therefore, it is likely that the Russian advances will speed up with these new crossings under their control, and the more and wider they make these crossings, the more difficult it becomes for the Ukrainians, and the Russians will therefore speed up even further. Therefore, such an operation that has allowed the Russians to cross over along the main highway and capture several fortified positions of the Ukrainians, significantly widening the area in which the Russians can cross over the canal alongside, has given the Russians a strong advantage in the battle over Chesivyar, the battle of which could significantly change this entire section of the front line from Siversk in the north to Toretsk and New York in the south. It will also be the gateway for the Russians to reach the defensive line of Slovyansk to Konstantinivka, which is the main and likely also the final defensive line of the Ukrainians. If the Russians break through this line, the entire Donetsk region will be lost for the Ukrainians. In the southern direction near Selidova, the Ukrainians have managed to recapture some positions. This has happened over a long period of time. Ever since the Russians first made their entry into Selidova, they quickly managed to reach the central parts of the settlement. The Ukrainians introduced some reinforcements, who since have managed to continuously counterattack the Russian positions, recapturing bit by bit 
to the point where the Russians lost some of these well-fortified positions, such as the industrial zone here northeast of Selidove. However, the Russians quickly switched from their efforts within the settlement to the flanks of the settlement, which has allowed the Russians to reach within close proximity of the Ukrainian supply lines in the southern and northern flank of Selidove. However, the Ukrainians still have one secure supply line that is outside of Russian reach, and that is the one going through Vishneve. Therefore, if the Russians continue pushing to gain physical control over their supply lines in the southern and northern flanks of Selidove, they will also be within firing control over the final remaining route in and out of Selidove, which would be a operational encirclement for the Ukrainian forces within the settlement, and those forces include several brigades. Therefore, there's a large Ukrainian force within Selidova, which is being used to counterattack and regain some position within the settlement. And the Russians are working on the flanks to conduct an operational encirclement of the settlement with the Ukrainian forces within it. In the Sukarina direction, the Russians have made a small advance along the western parts of the settlement. The greenhouse areas here in the western parts remains under Ukrainian control. The Russians would like to look to gain control of the fortified position, which would thereby gain control over the greenhouse area. And then a battle will commence over Kremlin Belka. The Russians are attacking here on a wide front as they're looking to secure the flank here to the south of Selidova ahead of further offensive operations towards the supply lines of the area. And at the same time, they're conducting positional fighting near Ismailivka and to Novoselidivka to hit the supplies towards Hirnik and Kurachivka. And that is all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out my YouTube membership and Patreon for additional content. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.